Right, so I think that concludes my introductory remarks, Jim. I think you all this one and we will create plans. My daughter's water bottle. <laughs> She's still looking for it. She left it in my office about two years ago. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Diane, for inviting me to present on behalf of uh, our school. And the reason this came about is we had a uh, fascination of science public lecture yesterday where we had a distinguished speaker from the USA who was here on the Massey Distinguished International Visitor Fund. And given the current news cycle, there, and this is a community uh, event where we invite members from the community to come and attend, I gave a few words about what's going on in the future of sciences and the uncertainty of the future of sciences at our campus. And so that's, I'm going to give a modified version of that talk. I'm going to take about eight to ten minutes, and I'm grateful, Ray, to have the opportunity to, to present. So here's the current news cycle with respect to this. Uh, I don't think anybody in the room can deny that this is not good optics uh, or, uh, for, the, for the university as a whole. And I think it captures a lot of the anxiety and, uh, and fright, I suppose, about the future of sciences at the campus and the future of the university. And we understand the need for the university to be financially sustainable. And we have gotten behind that. And we want that to happen. We, we, we desperately want that to happen. But, and we also understand that management faces difficult decisions. On the one hand, there's maybe a path that could be quite painful for a lot of people and derail a lot of things. But on the other hand, that might be the path that's necessary in order to achieve financial sustainability or financial, uh, the best path forward. That's a dilemma and a difficult decision, and we acknowledge that. And I'm just going to leave that dilemma for a moment, and at the end of my talk, I'll, I'll revisit it. What are we talking about here? What is it that we are fighting to make sure that we can preserve going forward? The science at Massey Albany campus teaches over 2,000 undergraduate students across Three different, uh, four different schools, sorry, science, engineering, business, and humanities. It includes 72 PhD students and 74 master's students. And we offer critical access to tertiary level science education for the North Shore and Northland. Data from the last years, 10 years, show clear and steady growth in student numbers here. That's what the data says. And so despite the fact that student enrollments are relatively flat, this campus has been growing. And public information, according to Troy Baisden, president of the New Zealand Association of Scientists, shows that Massey's finances are tight, yet stable. So scientists appear to be right to question risky changes. Well, maybe the science here is not that very good, then. Maybe that's why we should get rid of it. But that's not the case. We have research active staff with high caliber international reputations. We're ranked as high as anywhere else in the country in terms of funding success, such as Marsden's and international grants, and PBF, PBRF scores. Anywhere, including Auckland or Otago, we're just as good. This is monetized. It creates financial uh, revenue, but it's also reputational benefits, which are difficult to capture in an Excel spreadsheet. We regularly publish in top international journals like Nature and Science. We currently have three <coughs> Rutherford Discovery Fellowships, two of them in the marine sciences. Prestigious five-year fellowships. And we have two marine biologists who are set to receive the Massey Research Awards uh, in, a, in a month. We have six active Marsden grants and 23 Marsden submissions in this round, which is the biggest of any school in the college. And we have a recipient of the Rutherford Medal, Peter Schwarzberger. Yeah, 
He's got a scrappy personality. But he... <laughs> we, we talk about that. <laughs> He's won the Kiwi Nobel Prize, all right? So he deserves to be able to have that personality. And so I could go on and on about this, and we're running out of time. What it boils down to is we have high-end members of the knowledge economy in our school. But it's much, much more than that. All right? That's not all there is. And this is, again, difficult to capture in a discussion uh, document. Because science at Albany is an integral part of the broader community. The Albany community, the North Shore, Auckland, Northland, New Zealand, and beyond. And I asked staff yesterday to send me PowerPoint slides to that capture our impact on the community here. So if you just indulge me for a couple more minutes, I'm going to show you a selection of those slides. And to show you that the impact we go, goes far, that we have goes far and wide. We do fundamental discovery here. Yeah, that's our business. But this is the kinds of discoveries that can inspire the community and get lots of media releases, like the discovery of new planets. We do basic research that's fundamental for health concerns, like using mathematical modeling to uncover potential new ways to treat heart disease, or predicting the spread of diseases using math, which is, as we know, an incredibly important field right at this moment. We use experimental evolution to evolve bacteria to understand virulence. We use molecular biology to help save bees. We're investigating in international collaborations into fusion energy, which, if cracked, will have major implications to the future of our civilization on a global scale. We have partnerships all over the country. We have partnerships with museums that tap into modern technologies, such as 3D printing, to make fossils that are stuck in museums and inaccessible, now available to students and researchers. We look at paleontology with a forward-looking eye, to see what the climate was like and what life was like then, to get an understanding of what life is going to be like in the future, to predict the future. According to the computer scientists, AI is the future, and we have an intense research program into that. And we have a massive outreach program. Our outreach reaches uh, delivering STEM, which is an emphasis that the government has recently made to increase funding and uh, uh, efforts into STEM science. And we deliver that to low decile southern uh, Auckland schools, for example. Here's our chemistry group. They're fantastic with their outreach, doing amazing displays. And this uh, impacts hundreds, if not uh, over 1,000 students. Our outreach over, cumulatively impacts over 1,000 local area high school students each year. But it's not just the students. Even the little leads get attention. So Massey does family, uh, is involved with family science workshops, which have, contacted, have uh, had an impact on parents and children, over 800 of them in the last two years. I'm involved with this. Here I am teaching year threes what a hypothesis is. <laughs> They're a tough audience. <laughs> they ask tough questions. <laughs> a hypothesis is an idea that can be tested, by the way. We do our fascination science seminars, which is outreaches to the community uh, and delivers the excitement of discovery to as many people as uh, who wish to attend. We're a presence on Facebook pages, such as the Dolphin and Whale Watches, the Fang Pro and the North Shore. In total, a reach of 7,500 people. And we uh, provide sightings, but also details about behavior and give guidance on how best to interact with dolphins when you see them in the wild, which is necessary information and makes Massey a presence in this space. We hold international conferences, such as just last December, we had the Integrative Zoology Conference, which attracted people from 16 different countries and emphasized conservation biology going forward. We have a vast network with a diversity of groups that we've built over years and that we nurture. And this network provides us with resources to do research, but also to educate. With that network, we train and nurture the next generation of scientists to be the guardians of Auckland's unique native environment. We are part of that community. And it's not just Auckland or New Zealand, but even outside of the country.
where we have intense conservation biology programs devoted to understanding and protecting highly endangered species. We have an uh, outstanding marine biology program that does basic research, fundamental research, and connects it with important questions like what the effects of climate change are going to be on the oceans. And we do a lot of outreach and community contact with that as well. We're involved with Predator Free 2050. For example, we are uh, consultants and data ana analysts with the Pest Free Hibiscus Coast Project, which is to eradicate uh, rats and stoats from the Fangaproa Peninsula in the near future. All right, so two more slides. But collectively, this isn't captured in the discussion document, and it's an important part of the story. All right, we're part of this community, and we're providing knowledge to the future generations, the future leaders of this country. Now let's just finish off with this question, this dilemma. A difficult choice between something that's going to derail science here and impact the community and the university versus something that might be more financially sustainable. I don't think it's a choice you need to make, to be honest. I think the right thing to do and the financially correct pathway is the same. Let us teach Massey's new BSc program that we were instrumental in help designing. Simon, you know how much we devoted at every phase of the way, with the understanding that we would be delivering that program. Let us use the innovation complex as the new face of science for Massey, and that we participated and continue to participate in extensively in the design of that building with the understanding that that's where we are going to be moving from Oteoroa, which funds the majority of that building. In combination, these two things, combined with our outstanding talent, we will be poised to tap into the extraordinary growth potential of this area. This demographic has the highest growth potential in the entire country. With that, I'll end my presentation, and I thank you very much for all of your time. <laughs>